Oklahoma State here at the Hawk. Kevin Ingram and Brooks Webb, it's great to have you with us. And uh, Brooks, both these teams of the week, I think, got a, a good test and kind of a good feel for where they are. Yeah, I would agree. I think it was a, a very tough opening weekend for both of these clubs in Vanderbilt and Evansville. Vanderbilt hosting Oklahoma State. Evansville going on the road to NC State, two of the best teams in the country. And I know they'll be excited to get out here again and have an opportunity to compete against one another. One guy had a good series for Vanderbilt's Javier Vaz. Young man from Huntsville, man, he was swinging the bat, including his first career home run back on Sunday. Yeah, I think for a guy like Vaz, a senior from Huntsville, Alabama, it was an awesome opportunity to kick off the season against a really good opponent in Oklahoma State who brought some really, really talented pitchers on that roster. So for a guy like that to have the development that he's had over the course of the offseason and to be someone who came in and sprayed the ball around the field and gives you a lot of different opportunities of things he can do defensively, you have to like the start to the season for Javier Vaz. There he is, three for seven, had a nice weekend, four walks, and line that home run out of here to right center on Sunday afternoon. So Vanderbilt and the Grays getting ready to get things started on a gray Wednesday afternoon. Hopefully the weather will hold off. We'll get our game in here as Commodores got rained out yesterday. Supposed to play North Alabama, Evansville here. Commodores in purple laces, and they have been familiar opponents over the years. Devin Futrell will take the mound and make his first start as a Vanderbilt Commodore. Looking forward to seeing what the freshman has in store for us today out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, 6'5 and 195, making his collegiate debut today. And, you know, there are a lot of good young arms on this team, and I think everybody's excited to see a guy, Brooks, who was the number two ranked left-hander in the state of Florida. Yeah, Devin is a, a guy who over the course of the fall and, and certainly in January has earned the trust of pitching coach Scott Brown more and more with every outing. I think for, you know, someone that is a true freshman, he's very mature and uh, just shows uh, some pitch ability that makes him an option uh, right now, obviously in midweek games, but potentially into the weekend as the season progresses. Well, the lineup he will face for the Purple Aces. Got some veterans in this group, including Brent Witter. The second baseman, four for 12 against NC State, including three out of five in the opener and had a double and three RBIs. Seen some of these guys in years past, Tanner Craig, Danny Borgstrom. Remember these guys from previous meetings with the Commodores. See what Witter did over at Raleigh over the weekend. Well, a few changes defensively for Vanderbilt. T.J. McKenzie will get the start in left field today. We'd seen Javier Vaz start the first three games and left, but just getting some young players, some at-bats, and some playing time here in this early stretch of the season. Well, that's what uh, early season non-conference play is for, is to try to figure out your identity. And I think when you have a team like Vanderbilt that has some depth and has some guys that can do different things, especially with the versatility that you see even with somebody like Davis Diaz, who will play at third base today, I think that's what you want to be able to use uh, these midweek games for and all of your non-conference games to so just try to figure out what the pieces to the puzzle look like uh, with conference play being a few weeks down the road. Evan Berkey to get things started for Evansville. He is the Purple Aces third baseman and the first pitch of Devin Futrell's career is swung on and missed a fastball for a strike to get us underway from the Music City. Berkey from La Quinta, California. Three for 13 in that NC State series with four RBIs had a home run of the opener swinging and quickly no balls and two strikes see the aggressiveness early and I think this is a a team that I would describe as kind of a scrappy veteran club Berkey being one of those guys but he's somebody who uh, wants to bring the aggression with the first two swings of the game pitch away takes for ball one Berkey a graduate student 5'11 and 185 second team all Big West last season at Cal State Bakersfield missed inside run it to two and two you know, one of the most experienced guys you're going to find in this lineup, and this is an older team. They've got 19 guys who are a junior or older, and even though Berkey was not in that program before, he played 151 games at Cal State Bakersfield. Out in front of that pitch, Futrell begins the day with a strikeout of Berkey, one gone. Just a nice sequence of pitches for Futrell. Really like uh, really the energy and the pace of that first hitter, especially somebody that came at him aggressive. He matches it with his own style of aggressiveness and decelerates a pitch right there to put away a good leadoff hitter in Evan Berkey. And it came with a straight change and struck him out. Here is Witter. We talked about him a moment ago, the second baseman for the Purple Aces out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, a junior. 
And talking to Coach Carroll before the game, he, he probably likes his middle infield as much as any middle infield he's had during his time at Evansville with the combination of Witter and Sherry as they both make an impact both defensively but also at the top of the lineup and are kind of interchangeable pieces in that one, two, and three hole. Witter moved to second base last season, hit a couple home runs, drove in 17, really had a strong finish to the year. This one popped out of play on 2-0. He played against Vanderbilt two seasons ago when Evansville visited Hawkins Field. Went 0 for 3 with a walk in that game. And I went back through some box scores 2020, 2019, the most recent meetings between these two. Straight back to make it 2 and 2. Nice job by Fatrell getting back into the count after falling behind 2 and 0. Like to see that from a young pitcher. And just more aggressive swings from this Evansville offense early on. 2-2. Two, two. And him out in front. Two hitters, two strikeouts for Futrell. A great start. And Simon Sherry is the batter with two gone. The Evansville shortstop. Change up again from Devin. Just very well located. Starts more middle of the plate and just dives off to that outer third. And more than anything, just the change in velocity. Well, we saw the second baseman Witter. Now the shortstop Sherry takes a strike. He went two for 13 in that series at NC State, had a double and an RBI in the opener. Sherry is out of Santa Claus, Indiana. Ball on a strike. He was honorable mention all Missouri Valley last year and all freshmen as well. He hit 288, 19 extra base hits and 35 knocked in. Well, a cue shot down the first baseline, makes it one and two. Futrell trying to sit him down. One, two, three. Struck out Berkey. He got Witter. Both on off speed stuff. We'll see what he comes with here with a ball and two strikes on Sherry. He's really got that change up working so far, Kevin. And I think that's a pitch for him that when he can locate that early in the count, it really gives him the opportunity to do what he wants with two strikes. Call third strike. Three up, three down. Futrell fans the side in his first inning as a college pitcher. The freshman from Pembroke Pines, Berkey and Witter and Sherry one more time. Got him on the breaking ball. Nothing across for Evansville. Commodore's coming up in a moment. Well, a great start for freshman left-hander Devin Futrell on the first inning. Now the fifth-ranked Commodores get a look at Tyler Dino, the lefty for the Purple Aces of Evansville, everybody bundled up in that Vanderbilt dugout. It is cold here at the Hawk. There's Dino, six appearances last season, junior out of Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. A lefty at six feet, threw an inning at NC State back on Saturday, had three hits, allowed four runs, all on a sixth inning grand slam by Tommy White. He wasn't the only one victimized by Tommy over the weekend, and you see his numbers from a season ago in 2021. Enrique Bradfield Jr. to start things off for the Commodores in their half of the first inning. Sophomore from Hialeah, Florida, shows bunt, takes a ball. Something that Bradfield didn't do much of this past weekend was show bunt. Seeing a first pitch of the game right there and make this defense be on alert early. Two balls and no strikes. The preseason All-American and freshman All-American last year, second team All-American recognized by multiple publications. Appeal down to third, three balls and no strikes to the Commodore leadoff man. He was one for three with a run scoring double in game three against Oklahoma State. Stole a couple bases in game two and draws a four pitch walk to start the day. So Bradfield heads to first. You get a look at Jack Bulger as we View the Vanderbilt batting order, including Spencer Jones, one for four of the double and a run scored in game three on Sunday after a four hit day on Saturday that included two doubles against the Cowboys. Bradfield, Bulger, and Jones here in the first inning. See that experience in the middle of the batting order and then younger players down toward the bottom of the Vanderbilt nine that Tim Corbin assembles for today's game. 
Bradfield was going back to the base in that first pitch to Jack Bulger. Two guys that'll get their first start of the season and Davis Diaz at third base and TJ McKenzie in left field. Well, during the DH role today, a starting catcher in game three of the series went two for four with an RBI. Bunts this one foul for no ball, two strike count. Sophomore from Bowie, Maryland. Jack put together some nice at bats opening weekend against Oklahoma State. Really liked what he did in game three, just worked a really quality at bat, punched the ball the other way to kind of help move that rally along and tied the game up in the eighth inning. Behind the count here, 0 and 2. Way up and in, a ball on two strikes with Bradfield at first and nobody out in the Commodore first. Getting underway, Commodores and Purple Aces. Boy, right under the chin. Yeah, on a cold day like today, you're already gripping that bat, probably a little more tentative than usual. That one will certainly wake you up. No batting gloves either. Pitch out of the zone, two and two. Dino still trying to get a feel for his pitches. Not a guy who really had any command issues on opening weekend, but on a day like this, a little wet, a little cold, still trying to get a feel for the baseball. Bradfield takes off on two and two and steals it easily. Into scoring position with now a full count to Bulger. This offense has proven last year, once Bradfield slid into that leadoff spot, that offense can go as he goes. And when he's getting on base, especially in the first inning, you'd like to think that it sets up opportunities for this Vanderbilt offense to put up big numbers in frames, which you didn't see a ton of this past weekend. They were just missing that one big hit to cash in on potential rallies. Saw that a few times. Pitch out of the zone, so Bulger battles back after falling behind 0-2, and, and the Vanderbilt Commodores had the first two on in the first inning. Back-to-back -back walks for Spencer Jones. We talked about his big hit or big hitting weekend when he had four hits on Saturday and a double and scored a run against Oklahoma State in Sunday's matchup. From Encinitas, California, 6'7 and a junior. Stalled in right field. We haven't seen him a whole lot in the field over the first couple seasons he's been here. Inside corner for a strike. Just rooting for good health for this guy and uh, just see See him get out there and, and perform at a high level as you see what he did last year. Yeah, finally at, at what you would consider 100% health and just fought through some bad luck and injuries during his time here. And when you see it all come together, Kevin, I think there's always been shades of it, right? I think back to even the end of the 2020 season when he was really starting to kind of grab a role and, and was coming into his own as a hitter and then gets hurt in the offseason and then same thing last year and he's had some big moments during his time here but he's looking not to just have big moments he wants to be an everyday guy in the middle of this Vanderbilt order. 0-2 with runners at first and second. Check of Bradfield. Bounce back to the mound. Actually it's going to roll foul. Thought that one might stay in play. Ford picks it up. Do it again on 0-2. Dominic Keegan over to retrieve the bat, and Spencer will come back. Bradfield at second, Bolcher at first, nobody out. Outfield really doesn't play Spencer all that deep. Saw Oklahoma State play Jones and couple of different types of shifts this weekend as well, but not seeing that from Evansville either. Hit to the left side, fielded by the shortstop Sherry, gets the out at second, and that's all as Bulger is retired. Bradfield goes to third, one out, and Jones is at first. Yeah, nice play from Sherry there because he was playing more towards the second base back, trying to keep Bradfield close because you just can't let him move off and steal third base, so he's got a range all the way to his right. Does a nice job to just get the out at second base. No chance to double up Jones, who runs pretty well for a guy who's six foot seven. Witter thought better of making the throws. Here's Dominic Keegan. Runners at the corners and one out in the Commodore first. 
One for three with a double on Sunday. That was about as hard of a hit ball that we've seen in this park that didn't leave the yard. I mean, he hammered that ball to straightaway center field. That was impressive. Yeah, he can certainly do that all over the field. And anytime you can hit a line drive that just plugs its way into the batting, you know a guy is strong. And Dom does that quite frequently. And that double in RBI in game three. RBI double in the opener as well. As the season got started back on Friday. Commodore's trying to strike first today with one out. 1-1 one, one count. Two balls and a strike to Keegan. One of the experienced guys on this team. Seen there out of Methuen, Massachusetts. Just had a terrific year last year. Hit the ball all over the place and really consistent throughout the season. Fouls this one away to even the count. And the thing to watch with Dominic this year, Kevin, will be just the transition back to catcher. And the not only the leadership component that comes with that, but just where that can take your mental energy during a game and sometimes can bleed over into the offensive side. And that'll be something he's going to have to fight all year. Jones on the run from first. Keegan fouls again. And I think, too, managing that a little bit, you want to have his bat in the lineup all the time, but catching does take such a toll on you physically. You talked about mentally, too. You got to be able to uh, plug some others into that spot, whether it's Jack Bulger or someone else. And Keegan hits this one to shortstop. Might be two for Evansville. To second for one. High throw, not in time. Bradfield scores. They get the out at second, but Vanderbilt leads 1-0. Yeah, very fortunate right there that that throw was offline because you said it. That was a tailor-made double play. Took the shortstop right towards the bag at second base. Made a nice flip, but just a wide throw. But it doesn't matter how you score them. It's the name of the game is just to score more runs than the other team. And Vanderbilt strikes here first against Evansville. So Keegan replaces Jones at first. RBI for Dom. Swing and a miss by Tate Colwick. Tate, another of the seniors from Memphis. His numbers from last season. Homered six times, drove in 25. Didn't get that one. No balls and two strikes on the Commodore second baseman. 0 for 4 in game three on Sunday. A solo home run in the opener. Went three for six in the first two games of that series. Couldn't hold up, and Vanderbilt's done in its half of the first inning. A run on no hits, no errors, and one left. Vanderbilt won, Evansville nothing after one in Nashville. Don't go away. Well, Vanderbilt scratches out a run in his half of the first inning, leading Evansville 1-0. Fifth-ranked Commodores Devin Futrell on the mound. He struck out the side in the first inning, and here was the quote from Coach Tim Corbin on Devin, saying that came to the fall camp when he was a freshman in high school and uh, kind of caught Vanderbilt's attention right there as, as a young man. Yeah, I think that quote you know, certainly sums it up, and you're getting to see it play out here on the mound at Hawkins Field tonight. Boy, we have seen him pull the string on the off-speed stuff. Tanner Craig out in front, leading things off in the Evansville second. He's the first baseman and a veteran on this team for the Purple Aces. Fifth-year player out of Scottsburg, Indiana. Ball on a strike. Hits at all three games at NC State for Tanner. Three for 13, a double in game three. Home run and two RBIs in the second game of that series in Raleigh. Ball and two strikes here. Let's see if Futrell can make it four in a row against an experienced fifth-year senior. He did. Swung on and missed. Well, the changeup can be such a dangerous pitch with a left-handed pitcher on to a right-handed hitter. And you're seeing that play right into Devin's hands right now. And he's just been able to locate that pitch really in any count, not only as a put away pitch, but early in the count as well. And if he can keep that up, he's going to have a chance to go deep into this ball game. Yeah, you see a lot of times a right-handed pitcher to a left-handed batter with that changeup. There's a rocket down the right field line and foul off the bat of Eric Roberts. Senior from Hamilton, Ohio. That was the 
Most contact we've seen against Futrell so far. Roberts, couple hits in the opener at NC State. Two for ten in their opening series. Four walks, six strikeouts. Shows bunt, pulls it back. These, these guys will bunt against the shift, and you're seeing that right now. And you've got Carter Young now sliding in a little bit in that shift from Roberts showing bunt there. Fastball for a strike, one and two. When you throw all that, all the off-speed stuff, and then you come back with a fastball, and it looks like it's uh, getting up there even faster than it is. That's the beauty of the changeup. Left on left, struck him out. Five in a row to start the day. Fans Roberts now will go to work on Brandon Hoard, the catcher. Just a well-located heater. And a changeup doesn't change eye level so much as just gets you off of the fastball. And you saw Roberts go after the heater early in the count, the one he yanked foul down the line. But once you start mixing pitches and getting these hitters to guess, when you're filling up the zone, it can be very tough as he does it there again, pulling the string with that changeup. This is Brandon Horror, the catcher. Transfer from Kentucky where he saw limited playing time over the last couple seasons. Had three hits and 11 at bats in the series at NC State. One was a double in the opener. Ball and a strike with two gone. Five consecutive strikeouts by Devin Futrell. Foul tipped one and two, so getting ahead of the hitters. Horde with some SEC experience himself. Playing his last three seasons at Kentucky. One and two. Six in a row. Devin Futrell, very, very impressive in his opening two innings. He's faced six hitters and sat them all down. This inning, it's Tanner Craig, it's Eric Roberts, and it's Brennan Horde. Six up, six down. Vanderbilt one, Evansville nothing. The Commodores coming up at the bottom of the order after this. Freshman left-hander Devin Futrell has been the story of this game so far. Has sat down all six Evansville hitters he has faced on strikeouts. Now we'll see six, seven, and eight in the Commodore batting order against left-hander Tyler Dino. Starting with Parker Nolan, first base today. See him whole lot at third. Drove in a run in the second game of that series against Oklahoma State. 0 for 3 on Sunday. Big bouncer up the middle. Ranging over to his right to get to it was Witter, but not nearly in time. An infield hit by Nolan. Yeah, a good runner for a guy that can play the corner infield. And you like to see that for a guy like Parker Nolan, who didn't have his best weekend to start this start the season, but he's just a ball player. He loves the game, can do a lot of different things uh, well. And, those are sometimes the hits that can help you get on a tear. You just got to find a way to get to first base. A bit of a rough weekend as well for Carter Young, the Commodore shortstop, batting right-handed. The switch hitter against the lefty with Nolan at first. Bunts and back to the screen, one strike. Junior out of Sela, Washington. Part of the SEC All-Newcomer squad last year. Led the team with 16 home runs. That was top 10 in the SEC, also second on the club. See those 52 RBIs. Packs a lot of power in that frame from both sides of the plate. You see the ball jump off his bat from the right side at times. Fouled out of play behind in the count 0-2. You no, know, the shoulder injury certainly affected Carter's performance down the stretch, but he would never used that as an excuse and still came up with some big hits in that late season run once he returned for the Commodores. Dino gets him looking, one out. Second strikeout for the Evansville left-hander and we get a first look at Davis Diaz out of Pittsburgh, California, 5'11 and 170, a freshman. And Davis kind of a kind of a throwback player in the sense that just how he can literally play any position in the infield, but more of a line drive, kind of middle of the field hitter who's got a pretty good approach up there for a young kid. You know, slings in a strike. 
made his college debut in the second game against Oklahoma State on Saturday at second base. He was a top 10 shortstop in the state of California. One strike count with Nolan at first. Dino got some ground balls in that first inning to help get out of a mess. Could have been a whole lot worse than just one run. You see the pitch number already up at number 30. Nolan on the move, the throw down to second, and he's safe. A one-two count. Meanwhile, to Diaz, the plate as Nolan steals his way into scoring position, the second stolen base of the day for the Commodores. Definitely seeing head coach Tim Corbin getting the offense moving any way he can on a night where runs could be at a premium, both with the temperatures, but also some expected rain later in this game. So trying to cash in on as many opportunities early in the game as you can. Ball and two strikes, man in scoring position, a one run advantage for Vanderbilt. Diaz, see another pitch. 12th round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Number 348 overall, but Commodores are thrilled that he elected to play college ball. Missed inside, two and two. Uh, nice pitch there from Dino, just trying to go from all speed and then with the heater on the hands and that one definitely missed inside, but you're seeing that fastball location really start to come into play here for the lefty, both with the strikeout to Carter Young and then that nice one-two pitch there here to Diaz. Two and two. Fly ball out behind second base, Witter going out. And he's gonna be called off by the right fielder and the ball bounces. Diaz gets a base hit as Nolan heads on down to third. A miscommunication by the Evansville Fielders, Vanderbilt gets what probably feels like a free out. Runners at the corners with one gone. Yeah, definitely a free out. And I think the problem there is once Witter started backpedaling into right field, that's the point in time where you usually let your outfielder call you off, especially once you're backpedaling instead of running to the spot and really being camped because either one of them could have made that play with how long it held up there. But another break. Uh, for Vanderbilt here offensively as they're in business again with runners on the corners. Mark Schallenberger, the right fielder for Evansville. Here's T.J. McKenzie, a start today in left field. Guy's been around this program for a bit, the junior from Loxahatchee, Florida. He has been. He's been very patient and just continued to work, and he's somebody that just keeps getting better. He works on his defense, works on his base running. He's got some power in that bat as well and getting an opportunity here tonight. Puts down a bunt, first base side, and the pitcher threw it into the ground as Nolan scores. The ball goes out of play, and the Commodores bring home a run as McKenzie got the bunt down to score Nolan. It's 2-0. Just not trying to do too much, and kind of understanding with a left-hander falling off to the third base side, trying to put the ball in that right triangle towards the first baseman. Handles the bat well, does that. Not a perfect bunt, but just enough where it was going to make Dino have to think about, am I going to look at home or am I going to go to first? And once he made that 50-50 decision to peak, just rushed his throw, threw it straight into the ground. And the miscues continue for Evansville that allow Vanderbilt to take this early lead. So the single by Diaz on a ball that probably should have been caught. And McKenzie gets down a successful bunt. Vanderbilt has a 2-0 lead over Evansville as a play here in the second. Be a sacrifice bunt and an RBI for McKenzie. He reaches on an error by the pitcher. And runner is at second and third as Diaz Stands 90 feet away from a third run. Go back to the top for Enrique Bradfield. Walked and stole second and scored a run on a fielder's choice. Long drive, right field. Going back, Schallenberger to the warning track, able to haul it in. Tagging from third as Diaz comes home. 3 0 Vanderbilt. Sack fly by Bradfield for the RBI. 
And that's a, a nice at bat there, kind of what you're looking for given the second and third less than two out situation. And, you know, the wind is kind of a crosswind, if not blowing in on a warm day, that ball might leave the yard. But you can see the added strength from Enrique Bradfield to be able to just drive that ball to the outfield and score another run here for Vanderbilt. And that's what they're looking to do, Kevin, coming out of last weekend is just play a little bit more connected offense and really just pass that baton from guy to guy throughout the order. That's the way Vanderbilt's offense has been over the course of Tim Corbin's two decades here as Bulger takes inside. He walked. It was a race on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. See McKenzie at second. Two outs and two in for Vanderbilt in inning number three. Bulger SEC all freshman in 2021. In front here, two balls and no strikes. And despite the fact that you know, Evansville certainly hasn't helped themselves defensively, give all the credit to Vanderbilt in just applying pressure, putting the ball in play, not giving away free outs via the strikeout. And this is college baseball. That's, the, that's what you're trying to do is just put it in play and make things happen. Hard hit toward right center field. Schallenberger got there to make the play and retire the side. But Vanderbilt, two runs on two hits, one error and one left. Commodores three, Evansville nothing. We'll see if the strikeouts continue when we come back. Early lead for Vanderbilt against Evansville, three nothing as we move to the third inning. Devin Futrell, the freshman left-hander, using that changeup and it struck out all six of the hitters he has faced so far in his collegiate debut. He has looked good. Freshman out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Is that good, Kevin? That is excellent. It was like your collegiate debut back in the day. <laughs> Line drive left field, and Mark Schallenberger breaks all that up with a single to left. Guess we'll have to blame that on whoever put that graphic up on the screen. <laughs> I think more importantly with Devin, what you're seeing is not just how he's putting hitters away, but just his general command of the strike zone, how he's getting ahead in the count and then putting them away efficiently and not really messing around 27 pitches as he enters here in the third. Three straight games with a hit for Schallenberger, who had a knock in each of the last two games at NC State. Here's Danny Borgstrom, the left fielder. He went 0 for 8 in that series, did score a couple runs. We have seen him play in this park before. And slow breaking stuff in there for a strike, one and one. Back in 2019, Borgstrom went two for four with an RBI. And a drop that one in there. One ball, one strike. And then comes back with a fastball and threw it past him. Borgstrom, the senior out of Morris, Illinois. You see that breaking ball that he went to on the pitch before, 69 miles an hour and the fastball up to 87, 88. Probably looks more like 95 after that big bender. Hard hit ball, played on a short hop by Young. Gonna try the double play, and no, it gets away from the first baseman, Nolan. It would have been close. They retire Schallenberger at second. Borgstrom replaces him at first base. Good job there by Carter Young just to kind of funnel the baseball into his chest. It was kind of a, a tweener as far as could he potentially go up and try to catch it on a line, but just secures it, makes sure of one. He's got a strong enough arm that might have doubled him off if Nolan could have secured the ball at first base, but it was going to be bang, bang either way, and just make sure you get that lead out. This looks like it went off the uh, webbing of Nolan's glove at first base. Here's Ty Rumsey. Purple Aces center fielder takes a strike. He is a freshman from Evansville and very excited about his future. And hits in the first two games at NC State, scored three runs, went three for ten in the series. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. And they kind of think of Rumsey at the bottom of the order as a second, you know, a second leadoff guy in a sense. He can really handle the bat, puts it in play, likes the bunt game, and they really want him to help flip the order and try to sustain some offense for them at the bottom. Out in front of that pitch, one and two. He is a local guy out of Evansville North High School, which is from only 11 miles away from the Evansville campus. Guy was a top 30 prospect in Indiana. 
Three nothing. The Commodore is in front. Top of the third, left side. Nice play by Diaz. Pops up and throws him out. Well done by the freshman. Runner advances to second with two outs. Just a nice reaction there from Davis Diaz. It kind of playing in against the lefty and has to cut that ball off. So you have to have a, a very quick dive to his left. And as you can see, the sequence here from Fatrell kind of using all of his pitches right there, the fastball, the curveball, and the changeup. And that one just in on the hands of Rumsey and a really nice play from Davis Diaz to secure the second out. Runner in scoring position for Evansville for Evan Berkey to go back to the top 0 for 1 with a strikeout. One of the six consecutive sat down by Futrell to start the day. Futrell misses upstairs. Evansville team that comes in here looking for a first win. They were voted seventh in the uh, Missouri Valley Coaches preseason poll. The league that Dallas Baptist is picked to win, getting all eight of the first place votes. Indiana State second, Illinois State third. And that is a tough, tough league. I think that is a, a no easy outs in baseball in the Missouri Valley. Rolled up the middle. It's Young one more time. Evansville's done, and it's half of the third inning. A base hit at one left for the Purple Aces. Commodores three, Evansville nothing. Middle of the third in the Music City. You better bring the blanket if you're watching baseball out here today. Vanderbilt three, Evansville nothing. Bottom half of the third on the way. Spencer Jones, Dominic Keegan, and Tate Colwick coming up for Vanderbilt. New pitcher, the right-hander Nate Kujowski. He is from Colorado. Played at Sierra College in California and also Chandler Gilbert Community College in Arizona. Originally out of Cherry Creek High School in Greenwood Village, Colorado. Kujowski at 6'3 and 195, the right-hander. After two innings of work from the left-hander Tyler Dino. You saw the folks there with the uh, the winter hats and blankets and everything else, coats. I got my Vandy Boys uh, winter hat the other day on opening day. And maybe you should have brought it out here with me today. It feels as cold in this booth as it, as it does outside. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was watching at home thinking we're getting a reprieve up here. We're, we're bundled up too. It's really just a facade what you're seeing because it's always 70 and sunny here yeah, at, the Hawkins, exactly. at, at, at the Hawkins Field, or at least that's what someone told me one time. Yeah, it's kind of like Dodger Stadium. It's always sunny and 70 there. Here's the first pitch of the third. Is outside to Spencer Jones, reached on a fielder's choice. Homer three times, drove in 10 last season, had a nice opening weekend against Oklahoma State, including a four-hit game. See the fastball there, high 80s from Kajowski. And a little bit of a, a timing you know, pause at the top of his delivery. So something these hitters are going to have to deal with there at the top and then coming from a funky arm angle as well. Yeah, you see pitchers here and there that have that delivery where it's a little herky-jerky or whatever you want to call it. High and outside, four-pitch walk to Jones. Vanderbilt has the leadoff man aboard here in the third. That is always one of the hardest things of pitching in conditions like this is just feel for the baseball. We talked about it with Dino in, in the first inning. It's just he tried to find his grip, which he eventually did. He, he pitched pretty well, Kevin. I think he was the, the recipient of some, some poor defensive play behind him, but yeah. he actually made some quality pitches against some really good Vanderbilt hitters that ultimately didn't have the outcome you're looking for if you're the pitcher. Dominic Keegan drove in a run, reached on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. Mm -hmm. 
Vanderbilt team picked top five in all the uh, preseason polls. One and two coming into today's play. Jones on the run will steal second without a throw. Third stolen base for Vanderbilt today. Jones with the steal to go with ones previously by Parker Nola and Enrique Bradfield. And just no hesitation there from Spencer Jones, somebody that, you know, a big guy like Kajowski gets the ball to the plate a little bit slower with that high leg kick and arm action combined. That's a recipe to try to steal on as much as you can. Two for two. Jones now in stolen bases. Keegan with a man in scoring position and a favorable count. Now it's three balls and no strikes. And when you are used to that pause or delay, or whatever you want to call it, at the top of that delivery, and you go from the windup into the stretch, if you carry that over into the stretch, you're going to have to work in a slide step at some point, or people are going to steal on you all day long. Four pitch walk to Keegan after he issued the same to Spencer Jones, and now it's Colwick with runners at first and second, and nobody out. Has it been particularly close to the zone so far, and that one missed inside, but when you're spraying the ball all over the zone, you're not going to get a ton of help from behind home plate. And Micah Holman correctly called that one off the plate inside, and the Vanderbilt offense is in business here again. Single run in the first and two in the second. Colwick bunts. Front of the mound, a little double clutch, and Kajowski delivers to first. As Colwick advances the runners, Jones goes to third and Keegan to second. Simple situational baseball. Another bunt where just sets the angle, not trying to do too much. It really wasn't towards third or towards first in any way other than just, I want to get these runners over. And we talked about passing that baton, kind of running the race offensively and playing connected. That's what you're trying to do right here and handing it off to a guy who singled earlier in the game in Parker Nolan. Infield hit to lead off the second, stole a base and scored a run. As Brooks talked about, the uh, defense didn't really help out the Evansville left-hander Tyler Dino last inning. So Nolan takes a strike. Really had a nice season last year and looking for more of the same here in 2022. Commodore's up by three. 0 oh and 2 to Parker. And you think about Parker Noland and what he was asked to do last year, played third base almost his entire amateur career and then ends up sliding over and playing the bulk of 2021 at second base. Got him at first base tonight, but I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he's just a ball player, and I think those numbers show exactly what that means. Ball on two strikes. Good breakdown there as guy Max Hers bringing the graphics. Going to give him some room in right center field and probably seen the same thing we have. He can really hit the ball a long way to the opposite field. Big bouncer right side, Witter charging, and he dropped it. He knew he was going to have to hurry up. Run scores from third as Jones makes it 4 nothing, and Keegan goes to third with still only one out. That was going to be a tough play either way just based on how it was hit and the hop that the second baseman was going to catch there. And Parker gets down the line, as we saw earlier in the game as well. but. Another miscue behind this Evansville pitching staff, and Vanderbilt keeps adding on. Nolan gets an RBI. It reaches on the air. Spencer Jones scores the fourth run. Carter Young 0 for 1, called out on strikes. His first time up. A rocket off the pitcher, Kujowski. Ricochets into left field. Keegan scores to make it 5-0. Carter Young with a base hit and an RBI. 
Well, first off, hope Kujowski's okay. He looks to be. That ball was smoked. Not sure where it got him, but that ball was absolutely crushed from Carter Young. But more importantly, the base running maneuver from Parker Nolan going first to third on a ball that barely left the infield. Really heads up play from him to take an extra 90 there. As you see, that one looks like it caught him right off the backside and kicked up with such height that if the shortstop hadn't had to try to move up the middle where the ball was headed directionally. Well, he might have had a chance to catch it in the air. I think you're right in trying to see where the ball got him. And I guess if you're going to get hit by a line drive, that's not the worst place to take one. And now we'll have a visit from the first base dugout. Evansville might be about to make a pitching change. Yeah, I More think you're right. Either backside or toward the hip. Well, hopefully he's okay. That's. The main thing, not making light, is uh, Nate will head to the dugout as Evansville makes a pitching change. Vanderbilt with a 5 0 lead. Eric Roberts entering from the Evansville bullpen. Tell you about the new pitcher when we come back with one out in inning number three. Vanderbilt leading Evansville 5 0. New pitcher on the mound for the Purple Aces is Eric Roberts, 6 2, 205. He is a left hander out of Hamilton, Ohio. He is in the lineup as a DH, so now he's on the mound. As Coach Wes Carroll goes to the pen. Get a look at Roberts, the pitcher, after we saw Roberts, the hitter, strike out and is at bat back in the second inning. Being asked to do a little bit of everything on the road tonight. He has done a lot of both. He was a key two way guy last year, misses upstairs with ball one to Davis Diaz, who singled and scored a run on a sack fly by Enrique Bradfield last inning. Roberts last year 41 games as a position player and 18 games as a right handed pitcher went four and two with a 450 ERA pitch inside runner on the move throw not nearly in time Vanderbilt's been running all over the place so far as Young steals second to put two in scoring position with one out. And you have to like what you're seeing from this Vanderbilt offense not just with the at bats but also the approach on the bases just trying to take advantage, get guys in scoring position. We've seen the bunt game. We've seen them tap into uh, what they can do, kind of one through nine. And Davis Diaz have a chance to cash in here for his first collegiate RBI. Good hitters count, two balls and no strikes. Young at second, Nolan at third, three and oh. See if they cut him loose on three and oh, the answer is no. Davis takes a walk to load the bases for TJ McKenzie. That RBI opportunity will have to wait. Nice at bat nonetheless for the true freshman from Northern California. Well, TJ McKenzie has an RBI already, put down a bunt last inning, reached on an error. Bases loaded, one gone, inning three already, two runs in with Vanderbilt in front, five nothing. Roberts still trying to find the strike zone. And when TJ connects with a baseball, it comes off that barrel with some energy. Hit a ball a long way. Puts a ball in the gap. He can move too. So anything that finds its way, maybe into that right center field gap or a lot of room down the left field line, will have a chance to clear the bases. Ford keeps that one in front. Two balls and no strikes. And Borgstrom out and left has played pretty much every Vanderbilt hitter so far, what I would consider fairly shallow. And that left center field gap 
actually gets pretty deep out there and can be a lot of room and very tricky to cover for a ball if it does end up getting over his head. Well, McKenzie, the Commodore hitter is likely taking till Robert shows he can throw a strike. 3-0. and A four-pitch walk to McKenzie brings home a run as no one will trot in from third to make it 6 nothing. Everybody else moves up a base as McKenzie heads to first, his second RBI of the day. Just taking what the pitcher gives you back to back at bats there from Diaz and McKenzie. I think it would be very easy, especially for two guys getting their first opportunities on the year to want to try to do too much. But you like what you see there of just taking those freebies. Ball one to Enrique Bradfield. That's nine straight out of the strike zone for Roberts. Bradfield walked, stole a base, scored a run in the first. Sack fly to bring home a run last inning. Eighth man to bat in the Commodore third. There's a strike from Roberts. Well, we got a few folks in attendance here today. We wondered how many would uh, come with the weather conditions being what they are, and you got to salute those who are out here on a cold Wednesday watching the Vandy boys foul to the backstop one and two. That's settled in to be a decent little crowd here. We talked about the temperatures, but some potential rain coming in, maybe in the middle innings. Hopefully it'll hold off, but 4.30 start with these temps and a normally packed Hawkins Field. A nice crowd out here tonight. Bradfield didn't get it. Roberts records the strikeout. Two gone and Jack Bulger coming up. Just a fastball. That's one that I'm sure Bradfield would want back. Just beat him right out over the middle of the plate. But good response there from Roberts after back-to-back -back walks to come and, and get a really good hitter in Enrique Bradfield and somebody who does make a lot of contact. See if Bulger can do some two-out damage. Bases loaded. He is 0 for 1 with a walk in the dirt for ball one. I know you got to go with what works, but do you even think about bringing out the batting gloves when the uh, temps are in the 30s? To give you a little more feel? Not this guy. Well, hit out to second base. Delivery over to first by Witter, and Vanderbilt is done after batting around in the third. Commodore's at three more runs and lead Evansville. Six nothing after three at Hawkins Field. Well, Vanderbilt scored three, left three on base in the bottom half of the third inning, leading Evansville 6 0. Fifth ranked Commodores and the Purple Aces. And you see the head coach of Evansville, Wes Carroll, in his 14th season. He is an Evansville alum. He was a great player there, part of their 2000 NCAA tournament team, was a freshman All American in 1998, and still holds some career records. He is 10th all time with a 339 batting average. And a tremendous pleasure to be around. Truly one of the good guys in college baseball and always love having Evansville here to play in Nashville. There he is. Brent Witter. Fly ball towards center Enrique Bradfield. Waits and catches one out. Witter's 0 for 2. Strikeout against Futrell back in the first inning. He fanned the first six hitters he faced. Evansville reached him for Couple base runners last inning. Mark Schallenberger has the only hit so far. And there's Tim Corbin at third base Commodore dugout. He has taken five teams to Omaha, won it all twice with two runners up. Five World Series appearances since 2011 and four in the last eight seasons. He has built this program into a national power and done a great job. Football ball, no strikes to Simon Sherry, the shortstop. One of the best, if not the best, to ever do it. Futrell misses down and away. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah. 
two and one. Futrell's really mixed up the pitches. We've seen uh, real, some really good off-speed stuff in these first three innings he's thrown. And next again, a fastball that's really upper 80s, low 90s, and a 12 to 6 curve. Three ball, one strike count to Sherry. And I know I've mentioned the word aggressiveness a few times tonight, but continue to see that from Devin Falls behind 2-0 and just pumps a heater to get himself back into the count and does it again there on the 3-1. So very important to him to pitch to contact, which he's been able to do, but he's also been able to put these hitters away with his arsenal so far tonight. The payoff with one out. Sherry waits and Futrell brings it in there. Do it again. We're talking about Wes Carroll, his brother Jamie Carroll, played 12 years in the big leagues on a half dozen different teams. There's always a lot of great baseball in that Evansville area over the years. Strike three call, Futrell gets Sherry. I think he thought that pitch was low to God in the Evansville fourth. Yeah, he definitely didn't like the call. Looks like that was down and in, but I do think it caught the zone. Looked like a changeup that just was a nice, nice frame really behind the plate from Dominic Keegan, but I did think it was in the strike zone. Good call there from Michael Holman behind the plate. Tanner Craig, the hitter, the first baseman, 0 for 1. Struck out swinging in his first at bat. Some good numbers for this guy last season, just short of 300, good power numbers. Long drive, deep and foul. Down toward the baseball facility and Memorial Gym. That was a rocket. Not a surprise from Craig. He's on the Collegiate Slugger Award watch list for the second consecutive year, which goes to the best offensive player in college baseball. A little closer to being fair this time, but the count is a ball and two strikes. One of the best power hitters in Evansville history. He's somebody who, when he gets into a plus count, he can really do some damage. But right now, Devin Futrell holds all the cards at one and two. Call third strike. Evansville done in the fourth. Eighth strikeout recorded by Futrell as he gets Sherry and Craig back to back looking. Vanderbilt leading 6-0 over Evansville. The freshman lefty really impressive through the front four innings here in Nashville. The Commodores to send up the middle of the batting order in a moment. Vanderbilt has scored six runs and only three hits. Devin Futrell shutting down Evansville on one hit through the first four innings with eight strikeouts. And we'll see the same man who led off the third inning do the same in the fourth as Spencer Jones been on base twice. Scored a run last inning when he walked and stole a base. He checked his swing. Andrew Harris and I talked about it over the weekend. Uh, Spencer Jones is an interesting hitter, isn't he? For, for a big guy, you'd think it'd just be all towering home runs. Really more of a line drive hitter. There's a towering fly ball down the left field lines, making me look bad, out of play. Yeah, he is. No, you're right. I think you and Andrew nailed it on the head, and, and he's another guy, we mentioned it with Dominic Keegan, too, that can truly use the entire field. And if anything, uh, Spencer probably someone that puts the ball to the backside even more than the pull side. But I think that's the sign of being a complete hitter, right, is just being able to turn those line drives into home runs, but to do it on both sides of the field, but also live in the middle as well. Leans away from ball one, ball and two strikes. And that's what's so tough, especially with shifts nowadays, is he smoked a ball up the middle against Oklahoma State this weekend in the middle of one of those rallies, but it was right to a defender who just was conveniently stationed five feet behind the second base bag and led to the last out of the inning. One, two, sends this one down the left field line and fair. He goes opposite way again. When they talked about going backside. There's a double, and he's going to put on the brakes at second base. First hit of the afternoon for Spencer Jones, who had a good weekend against Oklahoma State. 
You and Andrew must really know what you're talking about. Andrew does. <laughs> just a good piece of hitting, keeps the hands inside, and you just see them whip through the zone. Goes the other way, as we saw it a few times this weekend, and I'm guessing you're going to see that a lot more in 2022 from Spencer Jones. Dominic Keegan with leadoff man in scoring position against Eric Roberts. Entered last inning, walked in a run, but then got the last two outs as Keegan swings first pitch. Two-way player started today at DH and now out there pitching one of the best hitters in the SEC last season. In the country for that matter. A check of Jones. Ball gets away. Three. Spencer digs for three. There you go. Read it nicely and moved up 90 feet. You've got that benefit when you're in second base of, of kind of reading the angle and, and seeing a breaking ball that's going to miss that short of home plate. So he's able to get a really nice jump and break once he saw that it was kind of a down angle and takes the extra 90 feet. Gigan, big swing on one and one. And pop free of the catcher horde. Just a heater, I think, that maybe caught the thumb side of the catcher's mitt. And anytime that bat's coming through the zone on a miss, it can affect your vision, obviously, and look like that's what happened right there. Right on that one, fouled it back this way. Remains a ball and two strikes to Keegan. That was coming your way, Kev. Yeah. I was going to have a play on that ball. Actually returned to another BP ball today. It was one of Evansville's and saved them a few bucks. Swung on and missed. Nice pitch by Roberts to retire Keegan. Didn't want to take it home as a souvenir. <laughs> I try to try to be a good host. You're just out here saving everybody eight yeah, bucks. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, eight bucks is eight bucks. You're right about that. It's a lunch at Chipotle. <laughs> Take Colwick. Strike out in the first and put down a sacrifice bunt that moved up a couple runners last inning. Fouls this one out of play. Only if you don't get guacked, and that pushes it up over 10 right, bucks. Right, yeah, that, that uh, tacks a little bit on to the total. Good response there from Roberts, just elevating with the hard stuff to Keegan and kind of lived on that outer third of the plate, tried to mix him early with the breaking ball and then comes back with the heater, gets Keegan to chase out of the zone. Ball on a strike here to Colwick. And more importantly, if you're Roberts, you're thinking about Keegan, a guy that's probably the best candidate, maybe other than Tate Colwick, to drive a fly ball deep into the outfield. and with a runner on third base and no outs to be able to get out of that at bat with no contact, that's a huge victory for Eric Roberts. Colwick, a big rip, came up empty, one and two. Nice little fastball there from Roberts. Coming cold last inning, maybe they're hoping he can be a little more effective in his second time on the mound in this game. Two balls and two strikes to Colwick. Fastball to me almost looks like it has a little bit of cut to it. I don't know if that's intentional or if he's just trying to get the ball to the outer third away from the barrel of these right-handers, but it looks like it's kind of darting off away from a righty. Oh, Colwick sends that one to the screen, remains two and two. And despite the fact it's a 6-0 ball game, when you get a runner to third base with less than two outs, especially with no outs, you have to find a way to put this ball in play with two strikes, even if it's a ground ball to the right side, just to get the run home. Pokes it that way over the second baseman's head as Jones will score easily on the single by Colwick. Second hit of the inning for the Commodores, 7-0. Colwick has his first run knocked in of the day. Vanderbilt tacks on one more. Just a good piece of hitting from Colwick to cover the plate. Breaking ball that was probably out of the zone and could have been taken for ball three, but just 
with those arms, he can cover so much of the zone. And I think that was his intent. It's just I want to put this ball to the right side and get this run home for my team. A greeting there from Tyler Shoemaker down at first base. Evansville is going to go back to the bullpen for another pitching change. Eric Roberts' time in the game as the pitcher is done. I'll tell you about the new hurler when we come back. Vanderbilt leading 7-0. Well, back in Nashville as Evansville brings in its fourth pitcher of the day, it's Michael Parks. A left-hander for the Purple Aces. You see his numbers in 23 appearances last season. 6'4", 215, senior from St. Louis. He is a veteran guy who played or pitched in 23 games last year, eight games in the shortened 2020 season, and 27 games back in 2019. Vanderbilt with a run in here in the fourth RBI single by Tate Kolek to bring home Spencer Jones who started the inning with a double strikeout of Keegan. Now we'll see Parker Nolan with a runner at first and one gone. Well, Nolan's been on base and scored twice. He Singled, stole a base, and scored in the second. Reached on an error and came around to score in the third. Vanderbilt scored three runs. Scored in every inning so far as Parks flips it in there for ball one. Got some long levers on the lefty here in Parks. And again, another, just like Kajowski, funky arm angle that can be tough to pick up from the left side. Finds a plate, one and one. Oh. Slider, left on left, never an easy pitch. Gotta catch that one out front, or see it all the way in and drive it the other way if you're gonna have any success against a pitch like that. Throw to first, Cole gets back. It has not attempted a steal through the first three games so far. Outside, two balls and a strike to Noland. What's the next step for this guy as a hitter after we, we saw him have show so much power, especially the opposite way last year? Well, I think he can really think he can tap into more pull side power too, Kevin, because you mentioned the opposite field stuff, but you think about the ball he hit at Tennessee as he swings and misses at that one, the ball he hit at Tennessee that, you know, hit the top right of the batter's eyes. So, you know, he can pull it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where, as he is probably going to get pitched differently. You even saw that this weekend against Oklahoma State. He's really going to have to commit to being a cover that inside part of the plate and pull the baseball, which he can with some authority. 2 2 from Parks. Retires the first man he faces as he strikes out Nolan for the second out of the fourth. That slider again just kind of manipulated. And the ball off the plate just changes how far he's going off the plate, outer third, just off. And again, mentioned the arm angle and how well Parks can hide the baseball. That's never an easy at bat for a left-handed hitter facing a guy like Michael Parks. Well, back over to the right side, batting for Carter Young, who was called out on strikes in the second and had a rocket off. Nate Kajowski, the right-hander, last inning. Ended up getting an RBI single. Stole a base and was stranded at third as the Commodores left him loaded after scoring three runs. 0-2. Oh and, and you know, the other thing with Nolan, too, and, and, and with a guy like Carter Young, Kevin, is just there are more data points on them from last year, really their first full season. So they're both going to get pitched differently, as will most of Vanderbilt's hitters. But just 
you know, coach or hitting coach Mike Baxter does such a nice job with this offense and just really getting these guys to understand who they are as complete hitters. And if anything, starting to use the middle of the field more as well, opposed to worrying about which direction that they may be pulling or sending the baseball the other way. It's just really tapping into that offensive skill set as a complete hitter and kind of owning their, you know, attack zone and, and how they defend the plate with two strikes. I think that's the next step and the next level that these guys have the capability to get to. Parks misses outside, delayed steal on a ball in the dirt, and Colwick gets there without a throw. Another really good base running read from Vanderbilt. You saw Spencer Jones take third on a dirt ball and take Colwick, no hesitation. That one really did not get far away from Horde at all. But when you don't hesitate and you keep energy in your feet, as the ball is delivered to home plate and you react quickly, it enables you to make plays like that. See if the Commodores come out with a two out hit here, give them another run home, fouled at the plate by Young, stays one and two. Or out on strikes. All right, into the inning. Back to back strikeouts recorded by Parks. We played four, Vanderbilt seven, Evansville nothing in Nashville. Vanderbilt has scored in every inning against Evansville so far and leading the Purple Aces 7 nothing as we move to the fifth. Evan Futrell, the freshman left-hander. Brooks really mixing up his pitches and was very impressive. Struck out eight over four innings, allowing only one hit. Well, there probably were a lot of nerves, you would think, for a freshman going out and pitching in a real collegiate game for the first time. But you certainly didn't see anything from Devin Futrell. He had every single pitch working, the fastball, the breaking ball, but most importantly, the changeup. That was the equalizer today in his first collegiate start, and he leaves after those four shutout innings. Gives way to Bryce Cunningham. Freshman Alabama native, 6'5 and 225, making his collegiate debut. Guy was a top 10 prospect in Alabama, fourth best right hander. Tim Corbin saying, really like the way he has uh, come along the short time he's been here. He will face Eric Roberts, Brandon Horde, and Mark Schallenberger in the batting order for Evansville. Roberts. Seen him on the mound, left-handed batter. He struck out against Futrell back in the second inning. Checking out the communication device and dealing in the 1-1 pitch. See the breath coming from the players. It is cold out here. There's a break ball stays outside three and one. A frosty evening here in Nashville. And both of these teams are used to this weather. And lucky for both of them to have a chance to play on turf as Evansville does as well. It's a fastball that Cunningham blows past him there at 91 miles per hour. Heater for Freshman right-hander can get up into that 93-mile-per-hour range. And he strikes out the first batter he faces, fanning Eric Roberts on a payoff pitch. One gone for Brandon Horde. Again, another nice job of falling behind in the count, but just not giving in, making quality pitches to work your way back into the count. And the strikeout party continues here for the Vanderbilt pitching staff on a Wednesday night. Nine recorded in four and a third innings. They stacked up some strikeouts over the weekend against Oklahoma State. Really, both teams did in that series. Off the mid of Keegan. We want to talk about power pitching, and just what you saw on both sides from Oklahoma State and Vanderbilt this weekend. It just seemed like every arm that came out of either bullpen was just in midseason form. Missed just outside, two balls and no strikes. When you think back to the opener, Vanderbilt stacked up 18 strikeouts in that 3-0 shutout on Friday. That is right out of the box to start the season. There's the outside corner, 2-1. and one. 
and to do it against a, a team, and, and you kind of saw that Oklahoma State offense come to life on Saturday and Sunday, but to, to do it against an offense like that with a lot of older hitters, I think that was the most impressive thing about that number of strikeouts is that one just misses. And got some rain starting to fall as the count goes to three and one. That was close. A little bit downstairs. Pop this one straight back over our heads. Count goes full. He got Roberts on a 3 2 pitch. Let's see what he does here with the catcher, Brennan Horde. We talked about him transferring in from Kentucky. He spent a few seasons there with a limited amount of playing time. Ball four as Cunningham misses outside. Mark Schallenberger, the right fielder, is the hitter. That's the only hit so far for Evansville. That was a single back in the third. Wide one to left field off Devin Futrell. One out deep. Inning number five. The Commodore is in front by seven against Evansville. Vanderbilt trying to get back even at two and two. Evansville comes in after an 0-3 weekend against NC State. In the Friday night game got away from Evansville just a little bit, but those Saturday and Sunday games were much more competitive. And going on the road, long bus trip up to Raleigh, that was a good test for Evansville despite the outcome. And these guys always schedule tough. They're mm -hmm. always playing really, really tough teams from the ACC, the SEC, and even in-state. Indiana, great Big Ten program. So they're battle tested every single season under Coach Carroll. A strike here to Schallenberger. And they had a note in their game notes. Seven of their 56 games in the schedule are teams ranked in the preseason polls. Their first four games, obviously, with NC State for three and Vanderbilt here for one. Four opponents made to NCAA regional play last year in 16 games against teams in the Power Five conferences. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, they were really close to taking a series at Georgia, I think, to start the season last year in Athens. And just a program that they're not going to be intimidated by anybody when they go on the road. Swung on and missed. Cunningham fans Schallenberger. Two outs. Another nicely located fastball and just low and away and really working the black of the plate, both Fatrell and Cunningham. Always starts and ends with fastball command. I think that's certainly the biggest thing for a pitcher. And when a young guy can understand that and got a long and successful career ahead, if they can do that every time they touch the mound. Danny Borgstrom reached on a fielder's choice. That was in his first at bat back in the third inning. A veteran player for this Evansville team. Two gone in the fifth. The runner at first. Rain starting to come down. I don't think it's going to let up anytime soon. Pitch outside, one and one. Didn't we have enough rain yesterday? Had enough rain yesterday for the next month. It pretty much rained from start to finish yesterday. Wiped out our game. Ball and a strike down the left field line, hooking toward the Commodore bullpen and hits off the screen in front of the pen. Push the count to one and two. Well, here's what they have coming up. We'll be back in Nashville in early March. They play Dayton. Up next this weekend. One and two, Cunningham trying to wrap things up here in the fifth against Borgstrom. Big bouncer over the mound. Carter Young, wow. what a play. All the way across the infield. He is excellent at shortstop. Showed it again right there. Got to that ball way on the other side of second base. Vanderbilt 7 nothing. halfway done here in Nashville.
I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for a little bit. We'll see the bottom of the Vanderbilt batting order coming up against left-hander Michael Parks. Commodore's leading 7-0, having scored in each of the first four innings, and a couple freshman right-handers sitting down to Evansville on only one hit so far. Parks entered the game, struck out Parker Nolan and Carter Young to finish things off in the fourth after Vanderbilt had scored a seventh run on an RBI single by Tate Kolick with one out. Well, Diaz has had a nice couple trips to the plate in his first start of the season. Got a base hit in the second, scored a run, walked in the third. Run on the fielder's choice in the first. Commodore has put in two more in the second on a sacrifice bunt and a sack fly. Parts throws a strike. And three more runs in the third. And an error on a base hit by Young and on a walk to T.J. McKenzie with the bases full. Here the rain popped out of play one and two. Nice night for baseball. Oh, it is awesome. Is there ever a bad night for baseball? One and two. You'll be thinking about this when you're kicking it in Hawaii here in a couple weeks. Tough life. It's a tough life. It's a long trip, but it's great when you get there. This one, again, fouled out of play on two and two. Be a heck of a test. Those guys, very talented ball club, visited here in 2020 season and mm -hmm. was uh, was a really good series start to finish. Good at bat here by Diaz, fouling off a few pitches. Gives the old wipe of the barrel underneath the arm. That's when you know it's starting to come down. Pulls it past Coach Tim Corbin, who didn't flinch at all. Treated by Evan Berkey. Well, the California native Diaz digs back in for another 2-2 pitch. Runs it full. This is just inside, and the quality at bat from the freshman continues. Payoff pitch, ball four, so Diaz works a walk to start the fifth. On for the third time, that's his second walk. T.J. McKenzie, the hitter, as we view what is coming up for Vanderbilt. So Oklahoma State last weekend. And from West Point to Nashville, we'll see Army this weekend, and then on to Honolulu for returning to play Michigan. An always tough non-conference schedule. Perennial regional participant in Army coming to Nashville this weekend. Mentioned Oklahoma State earlier and Hawaii, Michigan. That'll be a fun one. Getting to play the, getting to play a rematch of the 2019 National Championship Series on a Tuesday night. That one will be a lot of fun. T.J. McKenzie's been on base twice, put down a bunt and reached in the second, then a walk that brought home a run last inning. Actually, that was back in the third. One ball, one strike. That game against Michigan. Welcome Coach Backich to Nashville. That'll be the second former assistant coach from the Tim Corbin regime that'll come back to Hawkins this year, and that one will be live on SEC Network. High fly ball, deep right field, going back toward the fence. Will that ball stay in the yard? It's gone. Opposite field, two-run homer by T.J. McKenzie. Took it right down the right field line into the rain and makes it 9-0 Vanderbilt as McKenzie scores Diaz in front of him. We talked about the strength of McKenzie earlier in the game, Kevin, and on a night like tonight, cold, rainy, not a lot of wind, 
he just punches the ball the other way. And just the strength in those hands from TJ McKenzie to just go the other way to begin with. <laughs> and it was hit. And, you, know, you saw Diaz looking to tag there. He's talking about the heads up play, but that one just ends up carrying out of the yard. So McKenzie launches his first home run, and we go back to the top for Enrique Bradfield at the plate for the fourth time in five innings. How about that for your first collegiate hit? Home run at Hawkins Field. Bradfield out to second. Boy, that ball scooted right in on Witter, but he's able to get to it and make the play one out. Good response there from Parks after giving up the home run. Jack Bulger, the hitter, he is 0 for 2 with a walk. That was back in the first inning. Since then, a fly out and a bounce out. One gone in the Vanderbilt fifth with two runs in. Bulger takes a strike. Players and umpires have to stand out here and wear it in the rain. Michael Holman, the plate umpire. Chuck Pack at first, Adam Clark at second, Stephen Hagen at third. We got a lot of game left, but Michael Holman's done a really nice job behind home plate tonight with the strike zone. Bulger out in front, one and two. Such a tough job to begin with, but then you're talking about all the pitching changes that have already occurred, the elements, you know, all the excuses you could make, but he's been locked in from pitch number one. One and two. Count even to Bulger with Spencer Jones waiting to bat next. Foul tip by Bulger. Parks the fourth pitcher to work. We saw Tyler Dino to start. Nate Kajowski in the third. Eric Roberts also in the third inning. And then Parks last inning. Lead off walk and a two run homer by TJ McKenzie. Athletic trainer Chris Monterazzo lending a helping hand there to Jack Bulger. Dry off the bat. Bouncer over toward third. On the charge is Berkey. Not nearly in time to get Bulger. One out base runner as he beats that one out for his first hit of the night. Looks like the help with the towel was maybe what got it done there for the batting gloveless mm -hmm. Bulger. Just putting it in play with two strikes and that was going to be a very tough play just based on the conditions, a wet baseball, having to make that play on the run, and Walter's able to beat that one out. Yeah, it should point over toward Chris after that. That might have been who he was pointing to. A little connection to third year athletic trainer Chris Matarazzo. Swing and a miss by Spencer Jones, been aboard all three times. Scored two runs. Walk stole a base, scored on an error in the third, and then a double and scored back in the fourth. Yeah, Chris, one of those guys, not afraid to do whatever it takes to help keep these guys healthy and ready to roll. Back up the middle, Jones, his second hit. Stopping at second is Bulger. This guy is really swinging the bat well. Number 34, very impressive in this opening week of the season. Yeah, that ball was just smoke. Stayed back on an off-speed pitch and just absolutely hammers it back up the middle. Just using the entire field. Spencer Jones, you just have to be really happy for that young man with his start to the season. Tyler Shoemaker saying we haven't fun yet. Here's Dominic Keegan. Over two with a walk and a run score. Brought one home back in the first. Talked about the turf earlier, too. I think that's the beauty of these conditions. These teams are probably used to practicing and training in this, so mm -hmm. this is, shouldn't affect them any more than just, you know, a wet baseball and just having to really secure your throws. 
a little bit more than you normally would. But at the same time, that does not mean that it's easy. You start seeing guys slide past the bag and little things like how long you keep a tag on a runner can come into play. Three balls and no strikes to the Commodore catcher, Dominic Keegan. Yeah, the good part about this field is it saves so many games over the course of one season or a few seasons. Everybody likes playing on, on the natural surface, but this one, you know, it just drains so well that if you know, as long as the rain and whatever weather conditions you have going on doesn't get too bad, you can keep on playing. That ball gets to the backstop. Ricochets right back to the catcher, but he got to send Keegan down to first to load the bases on a 3-0 pitch. Ball does get tough to grip. To me, it looks like the rain hadn't let up much, maybe just a hair, but probably won't be the last wild pitch or pass ball we see tonight, given these conditions that we keep referencing. Well, Evan Bill's going to go back to the bullpen. Here's Kemble as the pinching coach for the Purple Aces. Bases loaded for Vanderbilt. Two runs in with one out in the fifth. That's all Commodore is leading Evansville 9 0. New pitcher coming up in just a moment. Well, Vanderbilt leading 9 0 over Evansville. In the pouring rain at Hawkins Field, the bases are loaded with one out here in the fifth. And Nate Harbin's a new pitcher for the Purple Aces. He is a redshirt sophomore out of Normal, Illinois. It becomes the fifth pitcher used by the Purple Aces today. A transfer out of Lincoln Land Community College. Played a season there, also a season at St. Louis University back in 2020. He didn't actually get to play any of that COVID season back in 2020, a couple seasons ago. Tank Colwick will be the batter. Nothing like coming into the game in a driving rainstorm and <laughs> get to face one of the better hitters in the Vanderbilt order with the bases loaded. Well, props to them. <laughs> I don't know if I would still be sitting out there. I mean, it is flat coming down. And it's cold on top of it. There's a breaking pitch for strike one to Colwick. You see the rain jackets are on, bundled up. Everybody's got their hood on, and some brave souls are still bearing the conditions out here today. or tonight, as I should say. One strike pitch here to Colwick. 0-2. Oh nice job here from Hardman coming into the game. Just pounding the strike zone right away. Runners lead from every base. Bulger, Jones, and Keegan. Remains no balls and two strikes. Oh, two. One ball and two strikes. And props to our SEC network crew as well. Guys Scott and Larry and Wes outside in the elements. Keeping the camera shots coming. Bob up behind home plate. That one in the dirt. Not far enough. Now it is coming down from third and out. Wow. Nice play. Two to one on the put out of Jack Bulger. Delayed after the ball got away from the catcher horde. Evansville made a play. Moving up from second to the third, Spencer Jones. Now two outs. And how about this tag from Hardman? Through the legs. Never really saw the runner, but just based on huh. his foot positioning, he knew the only chance he was going to have at making a tag was to do what he did, and that's to just simply reach behind and go for the no-look tag and he's able to get Bulger before his foot gets to home plate. Bulger 
Kind of got up and winced there. Let's hope he's okay. I had to watch the replay to make sure I saw what I thought I saw with the uh, the tag between the legs. That was really impressive. Now Hardman a chance to make a pitch and get out of the inning. Pull toward the Vanderbilt dugout. Just a slight hesitation there from Jack Bolger. Allowed Evansville to convert what should have been a run into an out. Fastball had a little run, and Colwick ended up on the deck. That does not feel good any time, but especially not on a night like tonight. Swung on and missed. Colwick is out to end the inning. Vanderbilt leading 9-0. Two runs on the T.J. McKenzie home run. The Commodores up big after five in Nashville. Well, Vanderbilt has scored in every inning, leading Evansville 9 0. A couple of freshman right handers have shut down the Purple Aces on only one hit. We see the pitch that ended Vanderbilt's half of the fifth inning. Ted Colwick striking out. Yeah, maybe hobbling a little bit as he heads back to the dugout, but out to take his position in the field and looks good to go. Yeah, tough kid. Fouled that ball off of his foot earlier in the at bat, and probably just some lingering effects from that but always a smile on his face and it would take a lot for him to not stay in a game anytime Bryce Cunningham his second inning of work couple strikeouts worked around a base runner and got a great play from Carter Young at shortstop faces 9-1 and 2 in the Evansville sixth and you can see it is raining harder than it has throughout the evening Rumsey 0 for 1 he He's retired on a nice play by Davis Diaz at third base his first time up. <laughs> There's obviously a physical component that comes into what you have to do when you're pitching in these conditions, but the mental side becomes very important as well, just staying locked in and just trying to do all you can and really control what you can control when it comes to the location of your pitches. Strike three call, Cunningham fans Rumsey to begin the sixth. Boy, I wonder at what point may have to stop things here. That pitch, nice run on the outside corner. Another well-located fastball from Bryce Cunningham and good focus right now on the mound. Which has to be difficult, just finding the grip as you talk about Brooks and focusing on what you're doing here. Just having Berkey over two. Strikeout against Devin Futrell, who fanned eight and allowed only one hit in four innings. Well, you can either do it or you can't. It's right. not really something you get an opportunity to practice or, or train in uh -huh. very often, and some guys can't do it. But right now, Cunningham having no problem. One and two. Bounce that one up there to even the count. 61st meeting between these two schools. Vanderbilt has gone 42 and 18. They last met in 2020. And missed by a whole lot to run it full. The Commodores won in a shutout that day, 6 0. Some guy named Jack Leiter pitched five innings. One hit ball, struck out three, or struck out four and walked three. That guy was pretty good. He was. Fantastic. Ball four to Evan Berkey. One out base runner for Evansville. Gave way to Michael Doolin for two innings and Chris McElvain for two innings as well. And we saw Chris get the start on Friday in the season opener. You mentioned Leiter and I think with this Vanderbilt pitching staff, that was certainly one of the questions coming into the year is just not worried about the talent as much as who was going to fill what role you're having to replace, you know, just under 50% of your innings from a year ago with Kamar Rocker, Jack Leiter, and Luke Murphy. And so far, it's very early, but identities are starting to come together for this pitching staff. Out of play, no balls and two strikes. Brent Witter, he is the Heavensville second baseman. 0 for 2, a strikeout in the first, a fly out in the fourth. 
Both top 10 picks last year. That was the third time Vanderbilt has had multiple top 10 picks in the same draft. That's the most of any school. Happened in 07 and in 2015. Back up the middle, right at the bag. Kolwick to first, a 4-3 double play to finish off the sixth inning. So Cunningham faces the minimum here in the sixth. Tried to get to it, but it worked out just fine. Right at the base for Colwick. Vanderbilt nine, Evansville nothing. Well, the Commodore is leading nine nothing over Evansville in the pouring rain in Nashville. Vanderbilt pitching has been excellent. Devin Futrell for the first four, and then Bryce Cunningham the fifth and sixth. Two first-year players combining to shut down Evansville on only one hit so far. Well, Coach Tim Corbin, talk about those draft picks. This program has provided a steady stream of first-round picks. That is really impressive, including Kamar Rocker and Jack Leiter. Leiter, then Rocker in the draft last summer. Parker Nolan. Two runs scored, a base hit, stole a base back in the second, reached on an error that brought in a run in the third. Back toward the mound where Hardman makes the play, runs and flips one out. Two generational talents that may not see a college rotation like that with a one-two punch for a long period of time. And if you were in the opposing dugout looking over when those two guys <laughs> were pitching, you were like, ah, oh, man, maybe we'll have a chance to get him tomorrow. It's like, <laughs> maybe, oh, wait, wait. Maybe we'll have a chance to get him on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. But those guys left quite a, a mark and an impact, not only here at Vanderbilt and in the SEC, but across college baseball. Carter Young, base hit that scored a run back in the third when he hit one off the pitcher and stole a base, sandwiched between two strikeouts. Hits this one towards second base, and Witter takes his time and just couldn't get the grip on that ball. It hit off the dugout and now rolls over toward the third base side. Young's going to go on down to second base. Well, that slick baseball, Witter had trouble with it right there. Young's on. One out. And for a routine ground ball to second base, that ball actually skipped pretty hard on its second or third bounce off the turf and kind of jumped at the last second. Took a little bit of a funny hop there at the end and just rushed the throw. These two middle infielders usually pretty sure handed, but we've seen a couple of miscues tonight. That one most certainly affected by the wetness of the baseball. Good start here for Davis Diaz. And that one goes to the backstop. Carter Young's going to move on up to third. Yeah, and the umpires are going to stop play. Well, you, I, I noticed when Hardman was warming up for this inning that one got away and went to the backstop, and it happens right there, and you start to sort of, not just sort of, but you get into a, a safety concern. So the play will be stopped with the pouring rain continuing to fall. And you have to wonder, with it being a complete game, could this be it? Aren't the head coaches going to get together and probably talk this one over, but just looking at the radar. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get a whole lot better, is it? I don't know if it's going to get a whole lot better, but honestly, this rain seems even a little bit heavier than I think what they were calling for. But once it started, it just really hasn't let up at all. And it's really gotten heavier.